The views expressed are solely those of the speaker and not necessarily those of PalTalk.com, AVM Software, or its advertisers. News Talk is online. News Talk Online is a production of PalTalk.com, the largest multimedia interactive program on the Internet with more than 4 million unique users on demand on iTunes and on YouTube and on my blog, GaryBaumgarten.com, where you're encouraged to post your comments, whether you agree with yours truly or not, and uh, where you should be subscribing to my Twitter feed, Twitter.com slash GaryBaumgarten. Uh, to uh, be informed of all the things that you need to know about what's going on across the globe, around the globe, to become an informed chatter on Pal Talk. And uh, just by uh, following me on Twitter, you are uh, entered in the contest to get a free uh, premium account here at Pal Talk. How cool is that? And thanks to our good friends at CRN Digital Talk Radio, we're syndicated to an additional. 12 million households. I am your host, Gary Baumgarten. I welcome you to the show. Well, demonstrations and pronouncements challenging the government at Friday's prayers suggest that things are heating up once again in Iran. The European Union and the U.S. State Department are both putting renewed pressure on Iran. State is hinting that the regime's legitimacy is being challenged, although Unfortunately, there are those governments who recognize the disputed uh, results of the last election, most notably France. I find that a disappointment. Israel continues to show Iran its military prowess, sending a message that it has the capability of striking that nation's nuclear weapons development facilities of, if necessary. Iran's new atomic energy chief is pushing back, telling the West to back off. Some observers believe the regime's foundation is so weakened that a collapse is inevitable, but then what? Well, joining us to discuss all of this is Iranian Middle East expert and analyst Shariar Shahabi. Uh, Shahabi is currently penning a book about what he believes to be a new Iranian revolution unfolding before the world. Uh, Shariar, welcome to News Talk Online on PalTalk.com. Uh, Gary, thanks very much. It's great to be here. Uh, thanks for having me uh, on your program. Uh, the last time uh, we talked was uh, Election Day in Iran. Uh, so here we are again and talking about uh, developments that have taken place. And I'll be happy to answer any, any of the, your questions and any questions that your um, listeners may have. Well, I, I will ask you about the renowned uh, cleric who seems to be occasionally supportive of the administration and occasionally an opponent of the administration, Hashemi Rafsanjani, who led the sermon on Friday. Uh, he, I think, ostensibly supports uh, uh, the uh, candidate who uh, believes that he really won the election, but he seems, I, I mean, I can't figure out what his position was uh, at, at uh, when he spoke. He seemed to be both critical and endorsing of the regime. Where does Rafsanjani stand and how important a figure in what's unfolding across Iran is he? Well, well, uh, anyone who knows Iranian politics a uh, few years prior to 1979 uh, would know Rafsanjani has been a, a political a uh, activist. He's been in jail during the, the Shah's era, um, and he was uh, highly involved in the development and, and draft of uh, the Islamic Republic's uh, charter uh, immediately after 1979. Um, He's also been the president of the country. So he's very powerful in the sense that both the diplomatic circles know him very well, uh, also the, the business circles know, know him very well, given uh, that he's, uh, he's been an influential figure in the economy of Iran. Uh, so he's, he's, he's very powerful in that regard. Now, his role uh, as of Friday, where he gave a sermon, um, clearly, uh, he was he was uh, advocating that he wants uh, things to be different than the path that Khamenei is taking the country. Uh, 
Uh, he wants better ties with uh, the free world. He wants engagement. Um, uh, he wants uh, what he calls uh, civil society, a move toward, towards civil society. Now, how is that going to be achieved? Uh, well, he made a few recommendations, or what he called recommendations, but clearly these were uh, a, a, a counterpoint toward, uh, you know, um, against what Khamenei was, was espousing. Uh, Khamenei's position want, is very clear. He wants tighter control on government, less involvement from the people and, and he wants further isolation because that's how they win. Rafsanjani on the other hand is more of a, an advocate towards a liberalizing Iran, opening Iran up and engaging with the rest of the world. So these two characters, these two political uh, titans if we, if we can call them in Iranian politics are now going head to head. Uh, the question is um, which one of them is going to persevere and which one of them is going to stand. Uh, the answer clearly lies in what Rafsanjani said uh, on, on Friday, which is our power, the, the power and authority of the state is driven by the people. If we do not have the support of the people, we are, uh, are, are going to fail, and he's, he's relying heavily on the will of the people, and we will see what will happen in the next uh, uh, weeks, if not months to come. Well, if nothing else, uh, and I know the regime sees that as a challenge, but what Rafa Sanjani has said is uh, clearly uh, an astute observation. Uh, you can be a tyrant and hold somebody under your thumb, but if collectively the people you're holding under your thumb do not recognize your power any longer, do not recognize your authority, you have lost it. Well, I've, I've just written a blog about this. Uh, I, I don't think Rafsanjani has by any means lost his power. I, you know, I call him the godfather. No, 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 no. That, I'm sorry. If that, that's, that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting that Rafsanjani is just clearly stating an obvious fact. If the regime uh, wants to hold a stranglehold over the people as it has uh, over the past 30 years, and yet... Uh, those people no longer recognize the legitimacy or the authority of that uh, regime, then the regime has, in essence, lost its authority over the people because you cannot hold a people down, frankly, without the acquiescence of the people. And so all he is really doing, although what he is saying uh, is obviously viewed um, as a, uh, a challenge to the regime, is state an, a fact. Okay, I got your question. Um, let, let's go back to June 12th. On June 12th, the people were not voting to change the regime by any means. What they were trying to say clearly before the election was hijacked is we want to determine our own future and we want to support a candidate that we think is closer to our hearts. And Amir Hossein Mousavi was the candidate of choice. Um, simply because Musavi had, in his campaign speeches and campaign slogans, said what I just said, uh, 